assets are, are another kind of a little bit tricky with the bank feeds. So we just have to make sure that when we're purchasing fixed assets, that we are that we are going to be able to pick up the fact that the fixed assets are going to be uh, higher dollar amount items usually. So that's one way we can kind of see whether or not we're paying for something that's going to be expensed or whether we have to put it on the books as a fixed asset. The fixed assets can be a little bit tricky because they're not day-to-day -day transactions. We don't buy equipment all the time. We don't buy buildings all the time. Uh, and so because that they don't happen all the time, when they do come up, they, they're a little bit unusual of a transaction that we might have to kind of think about a little bit more uh, closely. There are also transactions we often finance, meaning we take a loan out for them possibly. And there are transactions where we have to once again deviate from the cash-based method to an accrual-based method because in the United States at least, at least you have to do that for taxes even. And if you're doing this just for taxes, you're still going to have to put it on the books as an asset. Uh, the other thing that gets gets complicated with the fixed assets is the tracking of the depreciation schedules, which in the United States you might be able to do with the help and support of tax software or tax professional. The tax software usually being able to calculate both book depreciation and tax depreciation and therefore can act as kind of like your sub ledger. Uh, then the liability side, we have the credit cards. Remembering that the credit card is something that can be connected to the bank feeds as well. It's a financial institution. So just, just when you think about the credit cards, how they act, basically they act in the same exact way as the checking account. You buy stuff with the credit card, but when you buy stuff with the credit card, instead of the, the cash, the good thing, the asset going down, the liability, the bad thing, is going up. You owe money for the things that you're purchasing. And then, of course, when you pay off the credit card, you pay, then you're going to decrease the liability. So the, the easy thing about the credit, so the credit card often is more complicated to think about bank feeds for most people because clearly we're used to thinking about your cash going down rather than a liability going up. But once you wrap your mind around that, the credit card should be easier than the cash account oftentimes because we can do the credit cards almost all the time from the bank fee transactions once the bank feeds are set up because uh, because all of the transactions on the credit card will be electronic transactions. We're not going to have any checks or anything like that. And therefore, we can basically uh, purchase stuff uh, and then wait till it clears the bank from the credit card statement and pull it in with the, with the bank feeds. Uh, Note that the credit card also had those intercompany transactions when we pay off the credit card from the checking account. So we had to deal with that issue. And then we've got the, the uh, loan payable. So if we deal with any loans, then you're going to have to... Uh, um, uh, that causes problems with the bank feeds, as we talked about, because one, when you put the loan on the books, you might have financed something. So, so you have to make sure that you put the loan on the books properly. Uh, and then two, when you pay off the loan, it gets a little bit messy because you have to break out between interest and principal. And we talked about a couple different ways that you might uh, go about doing that. And then we've got the equity section down here. So the equity section is often the most complicated section for many people to grasp in part because uh, the equity section will be named different names depending on what industry you're in. So just remember that total equity as a whole is basically the same from a double entry accounting system, no matter the type of business, it kind of represents the book value of the business, the amount of the assets that are allocated to the owner. So if you think about this, you can do it two ways. You can say that we have the assets equal, uh, the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity, right? So that means that the assets are what the company has liabilities are third-party claims to those assets and then the equity represents the owner's claim to those assets you can also do it this way you can reformulate that equation by saying assets minus liabilities equals equity right and that means it's like the book value of the company so that means if you liquidated the company sold all your assets paid off your liabilities in theory you would be left with as the owner $89,120.34. However, it's not exact because all of the stuff you have up top isn't cash. So you'd have to sell everything 
and get the exact amount for these in order to liquidate the company, which isn't a sure thing, you know, to happen. But that's the that's the general idea. Now, when you go into the different concepts of equity, equi equity represents ownership. If it's a sole proprietorship, then you only have one owner. So it gets kind of easy. So then you just got the, the retained earnings might better be called owner's equity. And then as the company generates revenue, the owner's equity is going to be increasing, right? Because we're generating revenue, increasing our assets, and then equity, you could pull those assets out from the equity side. And then when you do pull the equity out, we call that draws from a sole proprietorship. So that's us taking money out of the business. And then when you put money into the business, which usually only happens at the beginning of the business or when you're expanding the business, we can call that an owner investment. And then we also have this current year earnings, which represents the bottom line of the income statement that, that is going to roll into retained earnings. In other words, if I changed the date range one day up, this number would roll into retained earnings. Now, if you were a partnership, then you'd have to do this whole thing for each partner, which gets messy in accordance to the partnership agreement, right? So now you're gonna have a, you're, now you'd have a different uh, capital account for each partner, different draws for each partner, and possibly a different owner investment account for each partner. So that you'll now have to track equity as though the, the business is a separate entity and you're trying to track how much of the value that's allocated to the owners is allocated to each owner according to the to the to the partnership agreement that gets difficult in in zero as well as any other quickbooks online any accounting software too because that means that you got to break out the current year earnings to the to the multiple uh, partnership accounts and it kind of messes things up that they use this current year earnings account because uh because you want to break this out into because this isn't an actual account this is zero trying to show hey look the income statement is part of the balance sheet but it gets a little messy when you're trying to allocate that out between different uh different partners if you're a corporation then then now you have the owners are represented by equal shares of stock right that was the beauty of the corporation and why corporations are actually easier in a lot of ways to do the books for than a partnership because in a corporation you're just going to call it retained earnings that's the earnings that are allocated to the owner of the corporation. The, div the